Okay, so who is I'm going to mute everybody. Bye bye. And oh. share my screen. Somehow you want me, 
Oh, how you love me. Somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. You want me. Somehow you want me. The king of heaven wants me. So this world has lost its grip on me. So this world has lost its grip on me. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. And somehow it frees me to take my hands off of my life and the way it should go. Oh, God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me. Oh, how you love me. And somehow that frees me to open my hands. God, you don't need me, but somehow you want me, oh, how you love me, and somehow that frees me to open my hands up and give you control. You want me, somehow you want me, the King of Heaven wants me. This world has lost its grip on me. Here's a picture that Kendall drew uh, reflecting on the theme for today. Peace be with you. Whoops. I don't know what happened to my share. Can you still see my screen? Breath 
We're having some technical difficulties here.
He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us take a moment of silence for reflection and self-examination before the Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us know that we are forgiven and raise our voices singing together let all things now living The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, defend, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you gave us your only son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is written in the first chapter of First Peter, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Word of God, word of life. According to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, 
peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. my screen and see all your lovely faces as I begin the sermon. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, for drawing us together to be your church. Gather us in, O Lord, so that we might hear your word, that we will come to believe that you are with us, that we would know your comfort, that we would know your peace today. Lord, Fill us with peace. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I've always been intrigued with this gospel story. Actually, I've been amazed that Thomas was able to separate himself from the other disciples. He goes off all by himself. And I used to ponder that. And I just did not get it. But now because of our present situation, I completely understand why Thomas was absent. Having been locked in and or, or shut in, however you want to describe it, don't you too have the desire just to get out and go anywhere and do almost anything just to get out of these four walls? One of our members posted in Facebook the other day that they were excited because it was trash day and they got to go out to the curb. I get excited when I go to the Giant and make my weekly trek there because it's something that I look forward to. And let me tell you that before this, I hated to go food shopping. Now it's a delight to get out of the house and just to go food shopping. My water heater died on Friday, and I was actually thankful to see the repairman show up to replace the hot water heater. I finally had face-to-face -face human interaction. Oh, it was delightful. So now I completely understand why Thomas got away, why he left the house and left the other disciples for a period of time. You see, today's gospel takes place on Sunday, the night of the resurrection. And all the disciples were locked in the house since Thursday when they had the Last Supper with Jesus. 
Now, I'm sure they ventured out a bit on Friday when Jesus was being crucified just to see what was happening. But by sundown on Friday, they locked themselves in the house, bolted the door, and they were cowering in fear. Why? Because on Friday, they witnessed Jesus, a man whom they loved deeply and even thought that he was the Messiah, the one who would change everything for the people of God, bring all their hopes and everything was crushed on that day when they witnessed Jesus dying on the cross. Their teacher, their Lord, Jesus, was executed like a common criminal. It was horrible. It was a, an act of injustice and hatred. It was something that should never have happened. The disciples had to wonder, how in God's name could this happen? For Jesus embodied love, goodness, and kindness. He was merciful and tender, bringing a good word and healing onto the world, a world that was desperately in need of hope. And the disciples knew in the depth of their bones that if the powers that be could kill Jesus, surely these same people, these religious and political leaders, would come by and do the same exact thing to them. You may wonder, what would they charge the disciples with? What would their crime be? Firstly, it would be the association with Jesus. And secondly, it would be believing in Jesus, believing that Jesus was the Son of God, the one who was able to set them free, their people, and perhaps even the whole world from the oppressive powers of Rome. And now, with the news that Jesus was not in the tomb any longer, Surely the Roman officials were going to come after his disciples because the disciples would have been the first suspects of doing something to take the body. And so because of the threat of what might happen, the disciples cowered in fear. They locked themselves inside a room. They felt lost and lonely and wondering what was going to happen next. Can you imagine what that must have been like? Of course you can. Probably more than any other Easter that you have ever celebrated, you can put yourself into the disciples' sandals. Now, granted, our situation is completely different, but the feelings of not knowing, of overwhelming fear, anxiety for what is next, and apprehension and trepidation for what is happening outside is very real. And it is in this situation, in this locked room, the air thick with disappointment and fear, Jesus, the risen Lord, raised from death, enters. Jesus enters our locked rooms and he says the most profound, beautiful, and necessary words that we will ever hear. Peace be with you. And then he shows his disciples his hands and his sides, and he speaks those beautiful words one more time. Peace be with you. He says it twice for emphasis, so that we would all know and understand that peace is a gift that the, res the resurrected Lord wants to give to us. He gives to us peace that surpasses all human understanding. And the really neat thing is, is that Jesus shows up even when the doors are locked for fear. Jesus is able to enter that space He's able to come in and banish and chase away all that holds us into the grip of fear. The magnitude of Jesus' mysterious entrance into the locked room of the disciples is more than a historical fact that St. John records. 
Yes, it happened more than 2,000 years ago, but more importantly, it's something that continues to happen today. Yes, Jesus continues to show up today. This is most certainly true. Jesus shows up in our lives in the pressures and the concerns that all of us have day by day. He comes into our midst and he speaks a word of peace to us. This week, I invited six of our members to reflect on where they find peace during this time. And I only gave them a prompt if they could talk about the peace that they have experienced during this quarantine time. And they all spoke about God's quiet confidence in their life, of God showing up and giving them to peace. I'm going to share my screen so that you can listen to their words. Esther Littleton asked us to talk about experiencing God's peace in these difficult times. And we realized that there are three main practices that we do pretty much every day that help us with that. First, we start the day with our individual prayers, and then we get together with a cup of coffee and read two emails that come to us on um, two email meditations, and we discuss what each of those mean to us, and that sets our tone for the day. We try to connect with different family members, church family <clears throat> members, and friends each day via phone, text, or um, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever is available. We also like to walk and keep moving. If we can walk, we uh, take a walk outside, or we practice our Tai Chi, slow movement Tai Chi that keeps us grounded. The combination of these different activities help keep us mindful of God's peace and his presence as we move throughout our day. Today, at this time, our lives are full of uncertainty and for some, great fear. We don't know when things are going to return to normal, or even if we are going to be able to see our friends again face to face, or if our favorite foods are going to be found on the shelf at the grocery store. And most importantly, if we or a family member are going to become afflicted by the virus. At times like this, I'm glad to be a faithful Christian because I know I have God's peace with me, and that helps keep me from being afraid. I feel that, as always, he protects me and gives me strength to face the day head on. Not that I don't have to be cautious and observe all the good practices that are recommended to help keep me safe when I go out. Oh no, I'm very careful in that way, to be sure. But because of my faith, I'm able to remain optimistic, to go out and do the things I must do, and to carry with me a positive, warm, and friendly attitude when I go so that others may be so inspired. In that way, I can share peace with them. Hi, I've been asked to tell you how I find peace during this COVID-19 crisis. Um, it's very hard sometimes. One of the things I do is I turn off the news. I divorce myself from what's going on in the outside world just to keep sane. Um, June and Luther keep me occupied and on a schedule. And I find that I really have to get out of this chair and do things. And one of the things I enjoy doing that brings me great peace and enjoyment is working outside. I get to see all the trees, the grass is greening up, neighbors are going by, and it just makes me feel good to know that I'm making my little corner of the world nicer than it was yesterday. So keep on going. If you feel like you're falling and you need to talk to somebody, give me a call. Call one of your friends, call your family, because I can guarantee they're going through the same thing as you are. So be well. See you in church. Bye-bye. In this time of extra fear and anxiety over our health, the health of our loved ones, the state of our personal finances, as well as our country's ability to endure under this strain, it might seem more difficult to find God's peace on the one hand. 
On the other hand, the quarantine has slowed down the pace for many of us, while making the world race at a feverish pace for our frontline angels, for whom we are so thankful. For me personally, life has slowed down. I am still working, but in a greatly reduced capacity. I still feel constantly busy checking up on family, friends, and patients, but there is less formal work and, of course, less work for which I receive a paycheck. There's finally time to work on minor house organization and preparation for our soon to come granddaughter. And Peggy, she's not here yet, but soon. But where do I find God's peace in all of this? For me, it is not in a specific place or during a specific time like the morning sunrise. It is really just in the knowledge that God is there with me. He is there with my family and all of my loved ones throughout these uncertain times. Just as in the sermon last Sunday explained, we are never alone. So even if the worst happened, I know that I am not alone and neither are my loved ones. That knowledge brings profound peace to me. Hi, I was asked to share where I find God's peace during these difficult times. I'm sitting outside and aside from the traffic on Darby Road, the birds, you can see the beautiful trees around there. And this is really where I've come uh, during this time. It's the simple things, birds chirping, seeing the bunny rabbits in my yard and hearing children laughing. I really feel like that's what's reminding me how great God is. The peace that he brings to all of us, especially in difficult times. And while well, everything in the world will change for everybody, I think that there are some times that things get very dark. And I feel like practicing yoga really helps me center myself. But remembering that God loves me and finding the beauty that he's created all around me help sustain me during this really challenging time. Always remember to smile at people, even if they can't see my face because I have a mask on, maybe they can tell in my eyes that I'm smiling and say hello and share love and share joy and share God's peace. As you can see from their testimonies, that they all recognize that even though these times are stressful, filled with angst, that amazingly, that in the midst of these days, there indeed is peace. They all talked about their faith, at knowing that God is present with them, which is primary. Jesus shows up even when we're locked in, quarantined. No president, no governor, no CDC, no WHO with their, all the regulations can distance us from Jesus. Jesus is always present and the rules of social distance does not apply to him. Praise God. And something else I found in common with all of their reflections was that they, they talked about how they fill these difficult days by doing things, getting physical, maybe yoga or exercises or going out, working or being in the garden. And I, I'm remind of, uh, remind, mindful of uh, Dave when he read from First Peter today. Even if now for a little while you have to suffer trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in the praise and honor and glory of Jesus Christ is revealed. What Peter is saying is that even though at times life is hard, difficult in many ways, we can get through these difficult times because of our faith, because Jesus has revealed himself to us. And this faith, Peter says, is more precious than gold. It's a wonderful gift that sustains us and keeps us always in the heart of God. And knowing this, knowing that God is with us, well, that brings to us peace. And that peace, says St. Peter, is the very thing that enables you to rejoice 
with an indescribable and glorious joy. On Friday mornings, even during this time of quarantine, our women's Bible study gathers for a Zoom study, and we have been studying the book of Revelation. Now, the apostle uh, John wrote this letter to a church that was suffering, going through a hard and difficult time. You might even say that many of these first century Christians were quarantined. They were hiding for fear of the Roman government. Uh, they were afraid that they were going to be tortured by the Emperor Domitian. He was going to hurt them in some way and perhaps even kill them. Under this emperor, Christians endured much persecution. Many were arrested and sentenced to death simply because they said that Jesus Christ was Lord and they refused to renounce it. And so in the book of Revelation, well, it's a letter of encouragement to Christians going through a difficult time. And contrary to popular opinion, Revelation is not about the end of the world. Well, on Friday, the ladies just completed the 11th chapter of Revelation, which affirms that no matter what, no matter how difficult things get on earth, no matter what kind of tribulation we go through, that our God reigns and that he is king and Lord forever and ever. Chapter 11 of Revelations are the words that inspired Handel's Messiah, especially the Hallelujah Chorus. Hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, and he shall reign forever and ever. King of kings and Lord of lords forever and ever. Hallelujah. What Handel was declaring is that our God is in control. And knowing that gives to us peace. Peace, no matter what, the struggle, no matter what the trials or tribulations, the problems that we encounter in life are nothing when we have the peace of God reigning in our hearts and mind. As we experience peace, in spite of everything that is going on around us, we are joined, our hearts are called to worship and praise God. You know, I'm truly amazed that all across the world, the Church of Jesus Christ quickly, without missing a beat, went online with their worship. And that in spite of the fact that we can't gather in our buildings to worship, the Church said we need to worship. And so we gather by Zoom, on Facebook Live, and many other platforms because we know that we have the peace of God and because God has given us this peace, we want to gather with thanksgiving in our heart and say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Lord, you are great. Lord, you are mighty. You are powerful. And so here we are gathered for worship because that's what we do as Christians when we recognize God is in our midst. Brothers and sisters, our faith says that no matter what, no matter what we endure in this life, our God is in control. God has this. And knowing this, that gives to us the peace of the Lord. In closing this morning, I'd like to remind to share with you a part of a devotion that came through my email this morning. It's the one that Don and Peg were referencing uh, by Richard Rohr. And the closing prayer was, let nothing disturb you. Let nothing upset you. Everything changes. God alone is unchanging. With patience, all things are possible. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone is enough. In other words, in the words of Handel, and he shall reign forever and ever, King of kings and Lord of lords, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Amen.
going to share my screen so we can sing our next hymn. Let us confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. And he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. The response to today's prayers is Lord in your mercy hear our prayer the Lord be with you and also with you and let us pray let us pray for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ let us pray for the church let us pray for our congregation and let us pray for all of those that are in need most gracious and great, uh, gracious God, most wonderful, most powerful, and most mighty, we are ever so grateful today that we could have the means to join together as one to worship and to praise your holy name. That you, and knowing that you are in control, that you have plans for us, that all we have to do is lay all of our cares and all of our concerns and all of our doubts and our fears at your feet, and that your love will be with us and it will free us. And if once we give you that control, we'll feel your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Yeah. Lord God, we, we thank you for the many blessings that you shower down upon us, those that we see and those that we do not see. Help remind us how blessed that we truly are and that we have been so blessed so that we could be blessings to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Lord God, we pray for the leaders of all nations, that you touch their minds, that you bolden their hearts so that they work to the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the people of this country. We pray that you quench their fears, that you calm their anger, that you heal the divides, and that you teach us to love one another, to recognize those in need, to see the folks living on the margins, and to, to help others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for the leaders of the church, for all of the churches, as they are finding themselves in the midst of the church bursting out beyond the four walls, and they're preaching and they're pre teaching the good news into the world. Help them be open to the new ways of the church and to, to give them the knowledge that they need to, to experience this. Use them and use us to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, to, so that we, um, so that the word is heard throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those who are welcoming new life into this world. We pray today, especially for Michael and Ashley. We pray that uh, for them, as they're coming to the end of their pregnancy, give them comfort, knowing that you will be with them through all of the labor pains of birth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord. prayer. Lord God, we pray for those who are, are facing rehab. We pray for those who work in rehab and caring for those who are sick and in need of that. We pray today, especially for Kirsten's mom, Roberta, she's facing that. We pray, too, for all of those who are sick from the COVID, those who have passed away as well. We pray for their families who are mourning loss. We pray for those who are battling the disease on the front line. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, healing God, we know that you have the power to heal, to give people comfort when they're suffering, to give people comfort when they are alone to give people comfort when they are sick. Today, we pray especially for Bill Bast, Jerry Young, Dorothy Plantholt, Don and Nancy Corman, Susan Haynes, Carol Lyons, Dave Huntington, Lee Zampetti, Louise Wallace, Maria DeFeo, Claire Gray, Connie Langzettel, Glenn Miller, Brenda Teague, Alan Dick, Anita Doherty, Marilyn Lindelow, Margaret, Mackley, and all of those that we raise up now out loud and in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, it is with bold confidence in your love and your strength and your power, almighty God, that we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share peace with one another. Peace be with you all. Good seeing you. Be with you. Peace with you, everybody. Happy you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. God is good. God is great. I see somebody. Good to see everybody again. Yeah. I miss you all. Yeah. I'm going to mute you and do the announcements. And um, I forgot to do them earlier. So uh, today, immediately after this service at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a worship and music meeting by Zoom. And then tonight at 5 o'clock, we will have confirmation class. And then at 6.30, youth group by Zoom. On Tuesday night, we're going to have church council meeting at seven o'clock. 
on Wednesday, we're going to have uh, the finance committee meeting at seven o'clock. And on Friday morning at 10 o'clock, we'll have the women's Bible study. If anyone is interested in attending any of those meetings, uh, please email me or contact me and I'll make sure that you get a link to those meetings. And I uh, encourage you to invite your friends to share the Zoom link with your friends so that they can also um, join us or tell them that they can watch it on Facebook, uh, Trinity Lutheran Church Havertown, um, live, uh, Facebook Live. And we're also on trinityhavertown.org, so people will be able to have multiple opportunities to worship. Um, today we are going to be sharing in Holy Communion, and I hope you've all set aside some bread and wine or crackers and juice so that we can have um, communion together. Also, I encourage you to be generous in your offerings. Um, offerings can be mailed to Trinity Church at 1141 Westchester Pike, or you can use your banking app and have the bank send a check directly to the church, or you can go to our website to make a donation. And as I mentioned about our offerings, I want to remind you that if anybody is in need, food vulnerable, uh, please reach out to me. Let me know what's going on uh, because maybe the church can help in your time of need. Also, um, one other announcement. I was just told that the National Cathedral in Washington is going to have a special Earth Day service at 2 o'clock this afternoon and you're able to go on to just Google the National Cathedral and you'll have links to their worship service um, today. So um, as we continue with our service, I'm going to put you back on the screen share and we'll sing together, give thanks. Oops. I invite you to prepare the elements for Holy Communion and to listen to a communion hymn while you do that.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give him thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God.
come to the bank banquet, behold the risen Christ, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his, in his grace. Amen. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and with our hearts burned within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Going to unmute you all. Thanks be to God. How you all doing? Okay. So good seeing you. Hi, guys. Hi. Good job this morning, Ken. How's everybody today? We'll get outside today. Yes, today. Thank you, Dan, for singing and Kendall for playing and Kirsten and everybody who participated in the service and for all those who gave testimonies. Thank you very much. It was great. We are community. We are church.
Yes. Price is risen today. Can't wait to see everybody again next week. Okay. Hopefully soon in person. Amen. But I think it's going to be a while. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye, Peggy. <laughs> Bye, Maria. Thanks for the testimony. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that's that's virtual. Yeah. And you didn't get to hear Kendall. I got to start at 9.30. Uh, There's her niece. Mm. Right now, so it's not our niece. Give thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for the testimony, Virgita. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs> Darlene and everyone. Yeah. Thanks for your friends, Maria, how is it? Good, good, good. Great job. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Hi, how you doing, Judy? Hi, <laughs> good. We're gonna have to get the your phone number. Lovely. Okay, Pardon you me? I missed you. I didn't know what you said. I think we have to get your your phone to work, uh, Judy, so we can see you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, right now you wouldn't want to see me. <laughs> okay, one of those days. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm going to sit outside today, and Joe's going to come down, and he said he's going to fool around with my phone at our 10-foot distance, so he's going to try to get me uh, okay, up and great. running, so that will help things, and uh, I'm just happy the sun's out, and I can be outside today and see some people, <laughs> but I enjoyed the sermon, and I sang along, and I took communion, so I feel a lot better today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God yes. is present. God is with us. Yes. It's nice to hear everyone. <laughs> there is. Yeah. So um, hopefully I'll be able to uh, uh, zoom in on my phone since uh, my office won't let me use the computer to zoom in. So I'm hoping Joe can get me set up with that. And if he has problems, maybe I can help you. Okay. I appreciate that. I really do. Probably, I don't want to do anything during the work week because I'm <laughs> stressed out Monday through Friday, but on a Saturday, or um, that would probably be the best uh, when I feel more relaxed. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Yes. Okay, I miss everyone. I, I want to talk to Alan. Yeah. Alan. Okay. Alan. Have a wonderful, safe healthy i pray every day for everyone to stay well thank you me too okay all right thank you okay keep in touch <laughs> oh yes alan any more word on your surgery he's gone oh he's gone he's gone i was going to see if he had a new date uh, and now he's family mm -hmm. okay. uh. Okay, Pastor, thank you. Beautiful okay. service. Thank you. Yes, it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Yes, I really loved it. Yes. Lifted my spirits. <laughs> what are you doing, yeah. boy? It was, it was great hearing from our members. Yes, it really was. Yes, I really enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, it was beautiful, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be happy when I can see everyone's faces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll be face to face. Okay. Say bye-bye yeah. to Pastor Kat, Kirsten, okay, uh, Dolores, Beauty Dolores. service, because in about 15 minutes, we have a worshiping music meeting. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Is that, the same, is that the same number? Um, now we're calling in another number for the meeting. Oh, yeah. If you want to come, you I can give you the link, Judy. Oh, um, I can't use the computer for it. Okay. Yeah, they won't let me. <laughs> they watch everything I do. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I, okay. I unfortunately I can't. Okay. okay. God bless. Bye bye. God bless. Thank you. Bye now.